welcome to another session on lead code number 647 palindromic substring so this question says that count the number of palindromic substrings in a given string so here different index can mean different substrings for example for the input abc there are three palindromes possible which can be just a just b or just c and for the input e which is three times there are three possible palindromic substring which is a at zeroth index a is first index a is the second index and similarly double a is the zero and oneth index double a is oneth and twoth index and triple a so every string is also a palindrome of itself only if it is identical when read from start to end or end to start. So here is our class solution where we have a count substring. This takes the string yes as input. So again is the length of string and answer is zero. So for center in range two times n minus one. So we iterate through entire string and try to account for all possible substring. For example, here A, B, A, B, A, B, A is the string. We check the palindrome using A as a center, B as a center, and also between A and B as a center. So that's all by counting the midpoints between each character, we are having a new length which has to be iterated two times and minus one. So here the left is the center divided by two. So basically if we take B as the center, which is a one of index B, so one divided by two is equal to zero. So left becomes zero, which is A. And the right is center modulus two. So we do the remainder after division of two. So if we divide First index, one of the index corresponding to b by two, we get one. So left plus one becomes the right. So idea here is that we keep increasing the right depending on alternate rights. And while left is positive, right is less than the length of the string, we compare the left and right characters. And if they are same, we keep increasing the answer. So answer here represents the length of the highest substring possible. And we try to extend the left towards left direction. So one way of doing it by reducing the index left index. And we try to expand the palindrome right side by increasing the right index, which is the right is equal to right plus one. And we return the answer. Okay. So here we see that this code gives us the highest length of a palindropic substring which can be found. However, our real question was, we want to count the number of all palindromic substrings which, which are possible. It means we have to find all possible palindromes for each of these centers and then add the number of palindromic subsequence. And there is a very optimized algorithm for doing it and I am going to use it. This is known as Manchester algorithm. So Manchester algorithm is tries to insert a special character in each of the between each of the string and it tries to add at the rate in the beginning and dollar sign towards the end. So in by this operation we are trying to put a placeholder for the midpoint between the strings. This is one way of doing it. And we have an indicator variable Z that represents this is initialized to zero corresponding to the length of T. So here there is nothing like A. This length of A means length of T. So basically the indicator variable has the same length as the temporary variable T. As we were talking about Menecker algorithm for counting the number of palindromes in a 
string, number of parentron substrings. So let's just go above and see the, the question. And as you can see here, the Manika algorithm, as I just explained, we have we insert a pound sign between instead of in place of uh, between in place of spaces between different characters, and we add at the rate sign and dollar sign at the start and end of the string. In this way, the string length is increased, as we can see, and that is why the loop is for longer times the length of the t temp temporary temporary variable t and z is our indicator variable and the initialize it to zero or zero so now uh, we will iterate to to the temporary variable t just one time and that will give us whatever we want so let's initialize z to all zero of the length t and the center and right are initialized to zero so here the center and right refers to the center of the substring, palindromic substring, and the right of the palindromic substring. We will try to check if our stream, a string is palindromic or not with the help of center, right, and left, but we are not using left variable because we know that uh, the palindromic substring, the left and right side will be symmetrical. And that is why we have, uh, if you look at the index of z here, two times center minus i, this is uh, going to be the mirror mirror of i with in with respect to if we treat that a mirror is placed at the uh, at the center and so i will be reflected into 2 into center minus i okay so let's let's see how it works uh, so we initialize the center and write to be zero and here at the rate sign and we start the loop so we start the loop keeping i is equals to one so i is equal to one means pound sign here and here we check if the i i i means the index so index is one here is less than right which is zero so this condition not satisfied initially if condition not satisfied so if this is not executed z remains zero then while we check now we check the t value z t i plus minus z i plus one so we look into around before and after the ith index and try to see if both are similar so here z i is zero so we look at the one before and one after and there is one at the rate before pound sign and a after the pound sign so the condition while is now satisfied and that is why the next next line is not executed after this Another condition is we check i plus z i is greater than or not to the right. So right is zero, i is one, and z i is zero. So one plus zero, left hand side is one, and right is zero. So this is satisfied because of which now we will shift the center and right. So center now becomes i, which is one. So one is now center. So pound sign becomes the center, and the right becomes i plus z i means one plus zero is equals to one. So center and right both are now at the point, at the pound sign. And we keep doing it. So now the third condition is done. It checked and we go to i again. And now the next loop for i starts, now i is equal to two. So it refers to value e. And we see that i is equal to two and this is greater than zero, which is right. So greater than one, because right now the right is equal to one. So if is again not satisfied, and if we compare the t i plus z plus one, so z is zero plus one. So we look one before and one after the a, and these things are same. Both have pound sign before and after a. So z i is so z at the point i is equals to two. Z z corresponding to a becomes zero plus one is equals to one. So now we have one here. And now again we check i plus z i is 2 plus 1, 3, is it greater than or not? So yes, this is greater than right. So now the center is shifted to i. So now a is the center and the right is, and the right uh, is the center and and the right right boundary of the parentomic subsequence is 2 plus z of i. So 2 plus 3. 2 plus 1, sorry, 2 plus 1, 
becomes three. So it is three after the A, so it becomes zero, zero, and pound. So now pound is the right, and A is the center. And we will check if i is less than right. So next i will be 4, which will be corresponding to the pound sign between A and B. And this is less than the right, which is index B, index of the character B. So in this case, we will shift the Z of i, which is uh, at this place, uh, corresponding to this uh, pound sign between B and A, is same as the minimum of right minus a, so which is one, and z of two into center minus i. So basically, we see the mirror image of phi in the center, which is b, and it becomes another phi, the second phi between a and b. So now zero will compete. So basically, the idea is whenever i is less than the right boundary, the z for i becomes the z minimum of these two, which is usually the case that it is the z of mirror image of that character with respect to center. And now we have already understood how the while and if works. And in this way, this logic, it keeps working. So whenever the i is less than right, the, the z from the previous mirror image of the value is copied. For example, for this side, zero is copied from here to here. And after that, we also keep checking the condition of t i plus z i plus one or i minus z i plus one. So z i plus one before and after. And that helps us in propagating z. So at the end of this iteration, the four iterations, we have a final z, which so where each point corresponds to the length of a number of palindromic sequence with that character as a center. For example, here three is the length of palindromic sequence taking b as a center. Number of palindromic sequence taking b is center. For example, let's say so here how many are possible? So b. For B, B is 1, A, B is 2, and B, A is the 3. So the maximum length is A, B, A. So that will make some length. So for returning, what we do? And for counting the substrings, number of uh, pentromic substrings we return, the sum of B plus 1. So where B is in Z. So basically, manager S returns Z. And for all the elements in Z, we add one and divide by two. So basically three plus one by two is equals to two. So corresponding, if you see, it's one plus one divided by two is one. So corresponding to A is a center, there is only one possible palindrome because the first element. For the second, B, taking this as a center, how many palindrome subsequent we have? So we have three plus one by two is equals to two. Because if you see B taking B as center, B is one palindrome and A, B, A is the second one. And then we see all are zero. So for zeros, zero plus one divided by two will be zero because this is the integer division. And then we actually, it's a good idea to keep a double division sign here just to make it uh, integer. And for five, it will be five plus one by two, that is three. So let's see if it's possible. So A is one, and then B, A, B, two, A, B, A, B is three. So there are total three palindromes because I'm taking this is center. Taking B to center, we see there are three through this algorithm, and let's see if physically there is three. So B, taking B is one, and A, B, A is two, and taking B, A, A is three, because their index, Different index, same character, different index can mean different things. This is what we know. And corresponding to A, there is only one palindrome, which is A itself. So now we understand the algorithm. And let's go back again and see this question was for counting the number of palindromic substrings in a string where different index can mean different substrings. Okay. 
and I try to write this code here cleanly just in case you want to write it into your compiler and check the results. Here all is the same code written in the cleaner form and you can pause the video and copy it and practice it. I request you to go through it at least two times. One time through the example and running the code through the example and second by by typing it on the lead code compiler IDE without looking into it. Thank you so much for watching and uh, please leave comments or suggestions if you want me to solve any questions which can help you in preparations or suggest me to make improvements. Thank you.